Hello, practical nursing students. This is Darlene Lopesto, nursing instructor here at Jackson College. Today, the skills video will be a female urinary catheter. I have my supplies. We would enter the room just like we would any other time, performing your GNAP, explaining to the patient who you are, checking their uh, armband to make sure you have the correct patient. And then the supplies I have, I have some perineal care. Um, supplies to wash the area before we start our catheter. I have a bath blanket to provide privacy and warmth. I have an extra set of sterile gloves just in case I need them. And then I have the Foley catheter indwelling kit. Now we would want to make sure that our gloves are intact. The package is intact, hasn't been compromised, and they are not outdated. Same with the catheter kit. Make sure that it's the size that you want. The catheter kit is intact and the expiration date is good. Now one thing that I want to show you that's relatively new in the hospital settings is something called a PureWick, Female External Catheter. And this is a device that you place uh, in the perineal area for females and then you hook it to suction. So we have wall suction and you place it in the perineal area and then it acts as a wick to wick away the um, urine when a client is incontinent. So that helps promote skin integrity um, in the perineal area and I thought that was really kind of a cool thing. I hadn't seen it yet so I wanted to make sure that you guys had a chance to see that. So look for that in your facilities. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with this simulation. Knock, knock, knock. Hi, Mrs. Smith. My name is Darlene Lopresto. I'm a nursing instructor at Jackson College. I have a doctor's order to put a Foley catheter in you. It's an indwelling catheter that goes up into your bladder to help capture your urine. You're having some trouble with that right now? Yeah? Okay. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Okay, good. This procedure will take about 15 minutes. And I have an assistant ready to help just in case we, we need any extra supplies, but I brought everything with me. So if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Are you having any pain, first of all? No? Okay. And before I start, do you feel like you need to use the bathroom? No? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to do hand hygiene. And then we're going to put her in an elevated position. Mrs. Smith, I brought an extra blanket just to help give you a little privacy while we do this. It's a little chilly in here, isn't it? Yeah. All right, now I'm going to pull your blanket down. Does that feel warm? Alright, the first thing we're going to do is just wash your perineal area. They gave you a bath this morning? Okay. Well, I'm going to do it again one more time just because that's our protocol here. I have a pad, so I'm going to have you just relax your legs out towards the side. Okay, is that comfortable? Right. Good, that gives me kind of a working area here on your bed. I'm just going to place a blue pad under her so that I don't get all her linens wet. And I've got a, soap of, uh, a bowl of warm soapy water. And we're going to do, you can either do the four corner technique like we've already talked about with hygiene or you can do the mint. I'm going to do the four corner technique. So again, front to back, cleanest to dirtiest. So just place a hand gently and talk to the patient the whole time to let her know what you're doing. Okay, you're going to feel a warm washcloth. Outside first. Outside nearest you, the outer labia. I'm going to change your corners. Inside. And one more time inside. And then if you think you need to repeat, go ahead. Otherwise, 
get a dry towel, my dry towel, and just kind of pat dry. And again, assess the entire area for any es uh, excoriated areas, anything that may look like a fungal infection may have started, and do let your nurse know. Okay, now this is wet, so I'm going to take this away. And we're done with that. Just going to cover you up while I get my other supplies ready. All right? All right. So I'll throw those away. Hand hygiene. Now, I don't want to turn my back on my sterile field. And I want to have it right up here close to my client. Got my gloves. I like to save the inside piece of paper because I use that for charting later just so I can remember what size that I put in. Okay, Mrs. Smith. I'm going to kind of have a working area here on your bed. So I'm going to put this bag down by your feet, and it's going to catch all my supplies as I'm using them. You, are you comfortable so you don't have to move? Okay. All right, remember as you're opening this, it is sterile. You have that one inch around it. Now sometimes the kits will come with the sterile gloves on top, sometimes the kits will come with the sterile gloves underneath. My sterile gloves are underneath, so I'm going to touch this top drape and I'm just going to set it off to the side because I'm not going to use it. Here's my sterile gloves. Before I open this, I'm going to take this kit and I'm going to move it right to my working area. Okay. Now we have to remember that if the patient has any kind of dementia, you wouldn't want to be putting this kit down here because they may um, contaminate your sterile field. So sterile gloves, I'm going to wash my hands one more time before I put these on. Alright, now we have one inch brown that is not sterile so that we can touch in case we have to. Dominant hand first, up above, off the table. Ta-da! Real life. So guess what I'm going to do? They're gone. That's why you bring a breath. Bring a backup. Or in case you have trouble putting your catheter in, then your assistant has to help you. Oh my.
can hold that one inch with the outside border here until you get the glove where you want it. Hitchhike your thumb, keep that out of the way. And then just slide right in. Okay, so I'm sterile. All right, so we've got some goodies in this container that we need to work with. First, I'm going to take this fenestrated drape, and this drape happens to be for a male. You can see the hole in it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of be creative. Now, remember, I have to try to stay sterile doing all this. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. I'm going to sneak my hands kind of under that, and I'm going to slide it under her legs, just to kind of add a little more sterile field there. All right, so here I have some saline, I've got my betadine to put on my cotton balls, I've got my lubricant, and I've got a sterile specimen cup because a lot of hospitals, the policy is to collect a urine sample when you uh, first put in a catheter. I'm going to go ahead and dispose of that because we're not going to do that right now. I'm going to get my tray ready. Be careful when you open the betadine. You don't want to end up wearing it. Just like that. And try to soak all these cotton balls because we're going to use them all. More is better. All right, this is my lubricant. I like to put it here. Some people put it in this tray. I like to put it here. Now we need to find our catheter. And that's where things get a little crowded. I'm going to leave my tray here. And this catheter bag, we don't have to worry about it being sterile except for the catheter itself. So you might be going, all right, what do I do with all of this stuff? Let's just leave this kind of wadded up. you got to maintain control of it. Because we want to lubricate the catheter. And we want to put our syringe of water on here. This is our syringe. And this is what inflates the balloon. Which will hold it sitting in the bladder. Now we used to test the balloons, but we don't do that anymore. That's not common practice to do that anymore. So I'm just going to lay that here. Again, I'm trying to maintain sterile. I'm going to take that catheter and I'm going to lube it up. About two to four inches we want to lubricate. All right. I'm trying to make sure I don't get break sterility here. And I did. So I just touched that bag so I would have to start over different gloves and that's where I would have my helper bring me some more gloves but we're gonna pretend that I didn't do that so I've got my catheter ready and there's lots of different ways you can do this to arrange your tray some people set it off to the side and they just reach over the leg now once I start cleaning the labia my hand is going to be considered contaminated so I'm gonna go ahead and touch my patient now and I'm gonna tell her that I'm gonna be touching her and I want to spread apart the labia as best that I can. Okay, And this is makes more sense when it's on a real person. Sometimes you may even need someone to help hold each leg, depending on the patient. So cleanest to dirtiest, top to bottom, we're going to wash the external 
labia major first. So one swipe down and discard. The nearest, one swipe down, discard. Now we're going to do the, the labia minor. So one swipe down, discard. And normally we do the labia minor closest to me, but since we only have one cotton ball left, I'm going to go right down the center. So right down the center, cleanest to dirtiest. All right, and throw that away. Come back here. So I stuck my hand in that bag, which I'm not supposed to do because that's sterile. So pretend I didn't do that. <laughs> Maybe I have to redo this video. <laughs> but it's a good thing I'm showing you all the oopses because then you won't do the oopses. So now we're ready to, to uh, put the catheter in. So I'm going to go ahead and get the catheter. Now be careful, it's going to be a little slippery, but we do want it lubricated, well lubricated for females. And just separate the labia. Sometimes if you have them cough, you can see the urethra, shoot high, aim high, and just insert, 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 insert. Oh, good, we've got urine. All right, that's what we want. So I'm gonna take this tray out of the way. I don't have to be sterile anymore. And notice with my non-dominant hand, I'm hanging on to that catheter because I don't want it to slide back out. So I've got the urine draining, and I'm gonna go ahead and inflate my balloon. So we're gonna just pretend. So we're gonna inflate, 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 inflate. We're gonna push the sterile saline in there, disconnect, and then gently just pull back until that balloon is sitting at the base of the bladder and at the top of the urethra. That's what's gonna hold this catheter in place, okay? Then I would do some pericare, wash her all up, and our bag here, we need to make sure that the bag is clamped. Notice at the bottom here, this is the spout, and this is what we're gonna hang over the side. And you wanna make sure the spout is clamped, otherwise you're gonna have urine on the floor, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how you unhook the spout, okay? And then you would empty it into what other, whatever measuring receptacle, wash it off with alcohol, and then put it back there. And it's clamped. So we would hang that off the side of the bed, not on the side rail, but on the actual bed, and then loop the tubing on the bed. That will create kind of a siphon, and by gravity it will help the catheter drain better, okay, more comfortable for the patient. Um, if she complains of it being uncomfortable and pulling on her labia, we can always put um, some tape on her leg and secure it to her leg so it's not pulling when she's up walking or going to the bathroom, or uh, we could also put it on her belly if she wanted it there as well. But usually we put it on their leg. So then I would clean all of this up, take away all of the barriers from the bed, make sure the linens are clean, and like I said, a final wash to the perineal area. And we are all done. Thank you very much.